Hi guys, and welcome to my review for Gerda A Flame in Winter. A narrative adventure where your decisions and how you interact with people could be the difference between life and death. Gerda A Flame in Winter is the tense story of how normal lives are turned upside down when German forces occupy a small Danish village. First of all, I just want to say what an excellent game. I thoroughly enjoyed it, although I feel it has aged me slightly with its nail-biting decision-making and agonising choices. I'll cover more how great this game is, but first I'll quickly run through how the game operates. Playing as Gerda in a third-person view, you walk around scenes interacting with objects marked for examination, or talk to characters. Certain objects can be stored in your inventory and used when the situation arises, but you have the choice whether to take these or not. Sometimes taking objects will aid you later, but they may also hinder someone else. There is no way of knowing for sure. Gerda often has a choice to make. Up to four different answers are displayed, and she must choose one to continue the conversation. Some of these choices may be greyed out because they require an item, like feeding someone or providing a bribe and others may cost you attribute points. You have three attributes in wit, compassion and insight. There are also four factions, namely the occupation, the Germans, the Danish and the resistance. Choosing certain dialogue options may appear to favour one of these factions and if it does, a point is placed against that group. If you upset a faction, a negative mark will be issued. It is not always clear which answers will be negative or positive and I was surprised a few times how, many how my answers were interpreted. I think a hint as to what your answers will achieve would have been helpful. This is also the case for every character you meet, and they can have a positive or negative score depending on how you interact with them. This can have a huge effect on how they treat you. During the day, and often due to the previous day's events, you are presented with choices on which destination you would like to visit. A brief synopsis gives you a clue as to what to expect. Some are time sensitive and some clash, so you may need to make choices as to where to go and who to see, influencing faction scores. Reinhard is lurking around the market. If I help him with his schemes, he might be more helpful when I try to break into the factory. The resistance is keeping Heinrich captive here. The boy's a bit of a sleuth. He might know something about the factory. My father is friends with some of the guards at the factory. I could try to persuade him to tell me about After their routines. After each day, Gerda summarizes the day in her diary. At the end of the summation, you are asked to choose between one of three choices that you feel covers the when events the of that Denmark, day. When the war came to Denmark, we were not forced out of our homes, and soldiers did not point their guns at us, but scarcity made itself known. Our lives became more muted, and our indulgences became more and more modest, until a pinch of sugar became a luxury. Still, we had a livelihood, and the simple pleasures of life remained to us, perhaps painted stronger than ever before. The Nazis had arrived under the guise of friendship, but it didn't take a genius to see how fragile that mask was. Each answer relates to either wit, compassion or insight, and will add a point to one of these attributes. These points build up over time and can be spent on one of the dialogue choices if the situation presents itself. For example, you might want to try and influence a German officer, and it might use up a wit point to do so. Your attributes sometimes combine in very dangerous situations, and all three attributes are needed. If this is the case, you can roll your dice to try and influence events. Depending on your scores for each attribute, you are presented with a likely outcome, between easy and challenging. If this throw goes wrong, it can have devastating consequences, and plenty of times I lost on an easy outcome. It is a real shame that you can't see the dice rolls, 
or know what score you need to beat. A green or red text box is the only indication if you were successful or not. I loved everything about this game. This will mostly appeal to narrative lovers, with its branching dialogues and storylines, completely determined by your actions and decisions. I was hooked from the start and got heavily absorbed into the events. I can't remember playing a game that was so spellbinding as this. It plants you firmly into the action and makes you agonise over decisions. The tension in some of the scenes is almost unbearable, and even making decisions about where to travel had me thinking hard, a good sign that this game had me captivated. There are numerous routes the story can take depending on your decisions. Almost every decision or action you take will have a consequence down the road, and it almost always comes as a surprise. The plot is brilliant at throwing curveballs at you, so you have to backtrack and use your skills to get out of tricky situations. It is incredibly uncomfortable and uneasy at times. The game is based on real life events, and the inclusion of historical facts in the form of documents you collected or events you witnessed was a lovely touch. Usually I don't necessarily read these, but in this game they were short, punchy and very informative and I found myself reading them whenever I could. As the story develops you will naturally start forming opinions on people and events and decisions steer you down certain plot lines. Siding with one faction may put you at a disadvantage with other groups and keeping a middle ground may not influence the right people when they are needed the most. There seems to be a lot of scope for playing the game in different ways. For example, in one playthrough you could take the side of the occupation and the German characters, whilst in another you could favour the resistance. There are places you won't have visited or situations you wouldn't have seen in your first playthrough, as events are based on schedules and times of the day, and sometimes they clash, forcing you to make tough decisions on who to see and potentially who to save. The decisions, sometimes going against your own belief system, help to keep yourself or your loved ones alive. The narrative was excellent at showing how normal people have become heroes in times of troubles, and the most unexpected people stood up for their beliefs. It was quite an emotional and harrowing story. There are ten main characters for you to interact with, and they can live or die by your decisions. These characters you will get to know quite well, so losing any of them is quite upsetting. There are peripheral characters too, but they're just included to bulk out situations and make events look more believable, but they can still have a profound effect on affairs. Dialogues between characters are always very brief, but yet the game manages to lay down thick layers of lore and relations between them. There is a diary which details more information about each character, but the gameplay is forever moving you around different places, introducing you to new characters and potential story plots that you feel you are juggling many decisions at once. Conversations are over quite quickly, but they happen often and build layers of intrigue. There is not much to read at all, and these meetings are interspersed with Gerda's own thoughts and what I would call interactive sequences to keep things fresh and varied. There is no voice acting apart from Gerda's diary entries, which are narrated beautifully, but emotion is still injected into proceedings by the use of text, with punctuation marks, fonts and colours giving a surprisingly effective outcome. Animation also plays a part, with characters shaking fists to show anger or playing out action scenes with dramatic effect. The game looks incredibly beautiful and quite unique. Somehow it fitted into the subject matter perfectly and added a sombre ambience. The graphics are actually based on Nordic Impressionist paintings and look stunning. The title tune sounds very poignant and memorable and sound effects are cleverly used to enhance tension and drama when required. Gerda, A Flaming Winter has such an elegant story where everything is done to such a high standard. I felt completely immersed in the story and decisions were agonising. The settings, environments and characters have you deeply invested in the story plots which are interesting, dramatic and shocking. The artwork looked incredible and sound effects were atmospheric. If you love narrative games, I would just get it. The game can be quite depressing and harrowing, which is understandable considering its subject matter, but I was incredibly impressed with every facet of the game and would highly recommend it. Okay, that's it for another review. My next review will be for Delusions of a Lost Soul.
a short puzzle adventure with light horror and mystery elements. It's very short, at only an hour in length, but enjoyable for an evening's entertainment. If you're interested in that one, click the notification bell, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks, and see you soon.